Today's data science interview question comes from Facebook. It's called SMS confirmations from users. So today's question is called SMS confirmations from users. It's by Facebook and the question reads, Facebook sends SMS texts when users two factor authenticate to log in at which time they must confirm they received the text. Confirmation texts are only valid on the date they were sent. Unfortunately, there was an ETL problem where friend requests and invalid confirmation records were inserted into the Facebook SMS sends table. Fortunately though, the Facebook confirmers table contains valid confirmation records. Calculate the percentage of confirmed SMS texts for August 4th, 2020. All right, so now that we have an understanding of the question, let's take a look at the data. So hitting the preview button here for SMS sends, what we have is uh, the date, the country, the carrier, the phone number, and then the type. So really, the only thing we really are gonna be focusing in on is the date because we're gonna be filtering on August 4th, 2020, and then the type. And the type here, we have confirmation, we have message, um, and actually if we do a run code to get the entire data set, we, have, we see friend requests here. And it seems like friend requests, message, and confirmation are essentially the three different types of text messages that were sent. And we know that the, there is an ETL problem where friend requests type were sent or were inserted into the table. And then we have invalid confirmation records here. So we can't actually figure out which confirmation records are invalid and which ones are valid. Fortunately though, we have the second table confirmers. So we preview that table. Every phone number here and date is a confirmed text message. So we know that the user confirmed the text message sent by Facebook so that they can two-factor authenticate and log into the platform. So we want to use these records as the valid confirmation records here. So now with an understanding of the data, let's write out the approach before we start coding. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, knowing that there was an ETL problem and we have dirty data in the table, is to filter out that dirty data. We know that there shouldn't be any friend requests in this table and there are some invalid confirmation records. So Looking at this type column here, let's filter out type equals confirmation and type equals friend requests. All right, so friend request is down here. We also know that we want to calculate a percentage of confirmed text for August 4th, 2020. So what we can also do is filter for August 4th, 2020, which would be right here, right? So filter for DS equals 0804, 2020. Okay, so we've gotten rid of our dirty data. We have filtered for dates of August 4th, 2020. And now we want to leverage this confirmers table because we want to count the number of confirmation text messages. Okay, so in order to do that, I'm going to take the confirmers table and just left join it into this other table, SMS sends. So left join Facebook confirmers table with Facebook SMS sends table on the phone number key and on the date as well. So now that we've joined the tables, we have valid confirmation text and we have all the other types of text, right? So now we can calculate the percentage of confirmed text for that specific date. So that's going to look like this. We, are, we have a count of the phone numbers from the Facebook confirmers table. And then we're gonna divide that by the count of phone numbers from the Facebook SMS sends table. That's the denominator of our percentage. 
We're going to then convert that into a float or a decimal because these two counts are integers and we want to change that to a decimal. So then we can multiply it by 100 to get a percentage. And that would be the answer to the question. So now with an understanding of the approach, we can start coding. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is filter out the dirty data that came from the ETL error. So in order to do that, I am going to use a where clause and just type out where type not in, and I want to include and exclude, I should say, confirmation as well as friend request types. So this not in statement here is basically not going to include type records where there it's confirmation or a friend request. So if I run this query here, I should essentially just get type messages, which is exactly what I get here. So now we want to filter for the date that we're interested in, which is August 4th, 2020. And I can write and ds is equal to August 4th, 2020. So I'm just going to run this query just to make sure I have it all correct. And I have five records here where the type is message and the date is August 4th, 2020. So I've essentially filtered out all of the dirty data and filtered for the correct date that I'm interested in. And now what I want to do is add in records where the user actually confirmed the text message to log in. So we have this table here, the Facebook confirmers table. And what I can do is a left join this table to this SMS sends table. So that basically will add in the confirmation messages. So I'll do a left join Facebook confirmers. So I'm going to alias these tables as A and B. And the key is basically going to be on B dot phone number is equal to A dot phone number. And because the second table here, this confirmers table probably has multiple dates, let's actually filter for the date that we care about. So we're going to say is equal to um, phone number and B date is equal to Let's just double check to see if this whole thing is correct by running the code. I do get an output. Everything is essentially the correct date, 08.04.2020, and we do see one record where the user confirmed the text message, right? So now let's perform the counts. So what we want to do is actually count the number of phone numbers we see on this right side here from the left join. So that's going to be count B dot phone number. And then lastly, we want to count the number of times we see a phone number here from the SMS sends table. So a dot phone number here. And then we can convert this into a float so that we get a decimal. And then we can multiply that by 100 so that we get a percentage. So now what I'm going to do is name this column Let's just name it percentage as percentage. And let's just see if we get something. Okay, we get 20%. Let's check if this is correct. And it looks like our solution is correct. So this is my way of solving this question. There are multiple ways of solving this exact question. If you had a different way, please leave a comment.